OK, so let's start the session. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I welcome you all to this week four live session on deep learning. So this course is offered by Professor Prabir Kumar Biswas, who is a professor in the Department of Electronics and Electrical Communication Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. And myself, Arka, I'm working as a Prime Minister Research Fellow in the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Patna, and will be working as an NPTEL PMRFTA for this course in this semester. Okay. So today we'll actually be following this particular roadmap. So we'll start by, uh, first we'll start by solving the uh, quiz solution of week three, which for which you guys have already been graded and then after solving the quiz three, then we'll take some problems, basically the practice problems for week four. And I have also planned to do the coding session in this particular week for the topics on KNN and SVM. So we'll be basically uh, focusing on multi-class classification as what we have seen in case of linear machines, linear machine lecture two in week three. So uh, there was a data set called Cypher 10 database. So on which you saw that there are several classes such as card, dog, like that. And for that, for that whole data set, you had trained, uh, theoretically, you had trained a multi-class SVM model and you saw the weights after unwrapping the weights you saw that the templates you can observe for each of the classes so there are total 10 classes so professor has shown you 10 different images basically the template images or the weights after you unwrap them so we'll try to uh, solve similar kind of exercise but not with cypher 10 database we'll be focusing on mnist database so i in the last coding session i showed you two uh, uh, basically toy data sets for deep learning applications so one is mnist digit data set and another is cypher 10 database so apart from so that uh, excuse me yeah, i think someone's mic is on Okay, so apart from that, these apart from these two data sets, there are several other data sets also. For example, IDs data set, which basically comprises the information of flowers, and there are several more data sets that you can actually explore. So let us start with the solution of uh, quiz three first. So I have taken similar questions together because it will uh, basically help you in understanding the concept better so the first question is so you need to uh, uh, evaluate the scalar projection of vector b onto vector a so log so uh, it seems that uh, you need to uh, calculate the scalar projection of vector B onto vector A. That means there is a vector A is there and there is vector B and you need to calculate the scalar projection of B onto A. That means this thing. So for that, what we have seen in the last lecture is that you need to uh, first get the unit vector along this particular vector on on top of which you are trying to extract the scalar projection so it will be the unit vector of a and then you take a dot product between a and b so this will give you the scalar projection so this is the formula of scalar projection over here so if you solve this particular question so you can start with so minus 3 into 1 over here and then you can write that uh, 2 into 1 and followed by that uh, you need to calculate the norm of a so norm of a is 
1 square plus 1 square. So in the denominator, it will be root over 2 and in the numerator, it will be minus 1. So minus 1 upon root 2. So the second question is similar. So you have a vector representation. So you have a vector V, which is 1, 4 and 3. And you have a decision. Uh, uh, what is the distance of the feature vector from the separating plane? So you have an equation of a plane. So the plane equation is given as plane equation is x1 plus 2x2 minus 2x3 plus 3 is equals to 0. So you can actually think it as like W. So the weight vector as because we have seen in several cases till uh, the SVM or till the uh, artificial neural network. So you have seen we write the artificial neural network or SVM. So the decision surface is something like something like this W transpose X plus P is equals to zero. So X is basically your feature vector. So this is the feature vector that you have over here and uh, you have a weight associated with that and a bias. So these are the model parameters that basically a model learns through gradient descent or through any other optimization technique. For example, uh, you, you can uh, employ a Lagrangian in case of SVM that we have seen. And in generally in the uh, deep learning or machine learning based application, we use uh, gradient descent based uh, weight optimization method. So if you think the problem in terms of the weights and biases, so your weight vector is uh, 1, 2 and minus 2 over here and you have a bias of 3. So you have a bias of 3 and the uh, vector is this one. So the vector is having uh, the dimensionality 1 cross 3. Similarly, you can see that the weight is also having the dimensionality 1 cross 3. So in the case of the SVM lecture, I think you have seen that if this is a decision boundary and you are trying to get the uh, distance, basically the orthogonal distance between the plane and a particular vector. So for example, this is the boundary. This is the decision surface. Decision surface. So what you actually do is you first evaluate the unit vector on top of the decision boundary. So the unit vector will be orthonormal to the decision boundary and the unit vector will be what? W divided by norm of W. So over here you are getting this particular representation. Along with that, if now you need to uh, generate the distance value, so you just have to take the dot product between this whole thing. Now, as you have a bias term over here, so along with this W uh, dot uh, V, so in the numerator part, you will have an additional term of the bias term. So this is bias. So it will be, uh, if I write it in the distance formula terms, so distance formula will be 1, uh, plus 2 into, now what is the value of x2? x2 is 4, so 2 into 4 over here. And then what is the value of x3? x3 is 3, so 2 into 3. Then you have, you, you, we have seen that there will be an addition of bias as because you have a bias term in this particular plane equation, so you can incorporate that over here. Along with that, this is your uh, the norm of W. So this is the W representation. So norm of W means one square plus two square plus two square. OK, so it will be one plus eight. Then it will be minus six over here and plus three over here. So four plus four plus one. So underneath it will be three. And over here it will be uh, 3, 3, 6. And 
it will be two. So option D is the correct one. So you can think it in terms of this uh, this uh, particular uh, equation also. So any particular scalar projection or orthogonal distance can be evaluated uh, by this sort of equation. You need to evaluate the unit vector on top of the sub, uh, separating plane, and then you need to just do the dot product between the feature vector and the unit vector uh, on top of the separate uh, separating plane. So this is the equation that uh, unit vector and then dot product with this particular feature vector V. And if you have a bias term over there, so you can add a bias term in the numerator also. OK. So similarly, so you have a point. So that means this is also a feature vector. Uh, if you think in terms of the machine learning or deep learning application, so you have a, a, a vector P which has this particular dimensionality with these particular values and you have a plane. And then again, you need to evaluate the distance between this uh, point to the plane. So again, the same thing. So you can write that P. Uh, so. So you can write that unit vector along the. Uh, along this particular plane. So this is the plane. So weight vector will be how much? 2, 3, 6. And you have a bias term. So bias is 7. So this multiplied with, that means a dot product between P plus bias. So you can write it like this. Norm of W will be 2 square. 3 square, 6 square, and the multiplication will be 2 into minus 2 plus 3 into 4, 3 into 4, and then 6 into 1, and then you have the bias of 7. So underneath it will be 4, 9, 36, so 49. So 49, that means it will be 7. And over here it is minus 4, 12, 6, plus 7. So it is 21. So 3 is the final answer. So this is the distance uh, from this particular point to the plane. So these three uh, questions were uh, kind of similar. So this this was uh, probably question number 10. So these three questions were kind of similar. So I thought of uh, calculating all the questions uh, one after another. OK, so uh, till here, if anyone has any problem, you can ask. Otherwise, I will proceed with the next question. Is any issue? Okay, so I hope there's no issue with this particular question. So let me proceed with the second, uh, the fourth question. So how many of you got this particular question correct? You can raise your hand. So the question is this one. Uh, if we employ SVM uh, for the logic gates such as and or these things, so what are the conditions? For example, if the margin is same or the weight vectors are same, okay. Two people got this particular question correct. OK, great. So let me start solving this particular question. So. Let's start with the AND gate. So 
so in case of and gate let us consider that we have two feature vectors x1 and x2 and output value is the class and then we'll plot the uh, image uh, the points in the feature space so let me just write down the truth table so over here 0 0 0 1 so let us consider you have uh, have two set of features x1 and x2 and this is the class information so this is feature and this is your label or class so if i draw with two different colors so uh, we have two classes class 0 or class 1 so 0 0 it belongs to class 0 so this is the 0 0 point 0 1 so over here it is uh, 0 1 1 0 so over here it is 1 0 so this is 0 1 this is 1 0 this is 0 comma 0 and the final one is 1 comma 1 so 1 comma 1 is a uh, class 1 okay so we need to first evaluate so what could be the uh, equation of the uh, what you call the separating plane using SVM. So in case of SVM, the targets are maximize the classification, maximize the classification with the margin with maximized margin. maximized margin value so in the theory class we have seen that for example if you have two classes this and this one so your you can have n number of uh, decision boundaries let's say this could be a decision boundary then uh, this could be a decision boundary but is what SPM does is actually SBM tries to find the optimal uh, decision boundary so that optimal decision boundary uh, is that particular decision boundary which maximizes the margin so over here this could be the possible uh, SBM output SBM decision boundary as it maximizes the margin value okay and these are some random uh, uh, decision surfaces that can be generated from any uh, sort of for example Bayesian classifier or something like that but SBM basically gives you an optimal solution with the hope that margin is maximized so in the case of AND gate, I, I think you have you guys have followed this particular week's lecture. So uh, Professor PKV has shown that how using a, a single neuron, uh, how uh, how you can actually implement the AND gate operation and or or gate operation. So over there in the case of AND gate, so the rough choice of classification boundary uh, could be X1 plus x2 is equals to 0 uh, will be 1.5 now if i draw this particular line it will look like so these points are 1 and 1 so let us consider this this particular value is 
1.5 and this particular value is 1.5 1.5 comma 0 and why i am writing this because from the school level mathematics you know that if you've been given uh, this this sort of equation you can uh, draw the line equation like this 1.5 is equals to 1 so from these points you you now got to know that what are the intercepts in the uh, x and y axis and then you can just uh, join a line over here like this So this is the decision boundary. If I extend this like this. OK, so this is the decision boundary. Now, uh, what are the support vectors? Can anyone comment about what are the support vectors in this particular scenario? So which one are the support vectors? 0, 1 and 1, 1. 0, 1 and 1, 1. So what about this one? For example, if you draw a line, if you draw a line, these two dots will be connected. These two are actually falling in the same line, right? So this is one of the uh, support vectors and this also comes as a support vector because uh, in this particular line, both the points, uh, both the points will satisfy the equation of this particular line. And this one is the another. This one is the another support vector. So the support vectors are support vectors are 1 comma 1 0 comma 1 and 1 comma 0 so uh, if you have any confusion for example for this particular equation the line equation will be x plus y is equals to 1 so if you just again simply write it like this x by 1 plus y by 1 is equals to 1 that means in x axis it will be 1 comma 0 and in y axis it will be 0 comma 1. So that means both the points are lying on the same equation of line. So both are satisfying this particular equation. So for using that logic, these three are the support vectors. Now uh, what will be the margin? Graphically, what is the margin? <laughs> It is that distance between the two support vectors? Yes, so it is the distance between two support vectors or uh, you can say that it is the distance between from this point to this point. So how you can evaluate the distance between from here to here? So it will be simply the orthogonal distance from this point to this particular line and from this point to this point. So over here, this is the distance D1. This is the distance D1, D2. So margin, let's say margin is margin I'm abbreviating as M. So M is equals to D1 plus D2. So D1 is orthogonal distance from uh, 0, 1 to decision surface plus d2 is same orthogonal distance from 1 comma 1 to decision surface now you have the, uh, the equation of decision surface is this one and you have got the points so i want you to evaluate the margin so d1 and d2 you first evaluate and add them so you will get the margin so i have shown you that how to basically calculate the orthogonal distance from a line to a point so using the same concept please evaluate what is the value of d1 and d2 
So what is the value of D1? So you can write it like this. For example, you have 0, 1, and this is the equation of the line. So 0 into 1 followed by 1 into 1 and then minus 1.5. And then you can write the norm of this particular uh, uh, decision surface. So 1 square plus 1 square. Similarly, D2 is how much? D2, now you have the point 1 comma 1. So 1 into 1, so you got 1. Then again 1 into 1, 1 and then minus 1.5. So you can take mod also because the distance, uh, the negative distance just shows the direction. So you can take mod also. So over here 1 square plus 1 square again. So over here the output is 1 upon 2 root 2 and over here also the margin is 1 upon 2 root 2. So sorry, the distance is 1 upon 2 root 2. So margin is D1 plus D2. So it will be nothing but 1 by root 2. Fine. So for AND gate, the margin is 1 by root 2. Now we need to evaluate for the OR gate. So if I just take one more page. So now we'll be evaluating for OR gate. So let's say, let me write the truth table over here. So it will. So you have X1, you have X2, and this is Y. So 0, 0, 0, 1. One zero and one one. So this is zero one one one. So if you just plot them in the feature space, so now the scenario will be you have x one and x two over there, and zero zero belongs to class zero. Zero zero belongs to class zero. Then Then you have 0, 1. So 0, 1 is class 1. Then 1, 0 again it is class 1. And 1, 1 is also your class 1. Now in the case of OR gate, the optimal hyperplane equation, the equation of the optimal hyperplane. So let me write the values as well. So over here it is 1 comma 0. So here it is 1 comma 1 and you can write it as 0 comma 1 and this is the origin 0 comma 0, right? Now the planes equation or the sorry, the straight line equation which will actually help in discrete uh, make a discretion between these particular classes. It will be x1 plus x2 is equals to 0.5. So that means this is 0.5 over here and this is 0.5 over here in both X and Y axis. So you can write that you can draw a plane like this, like this. So this is the SBM decision boundary. And the equation is also given. So again, uh, just for the sake of completeness, it was 0 0.5 comma 0 and this is 0 comma 0 0.5. Sir, excuse yes. me. Yes, yes. Can you just again come up with that? How you choose the decision boundary? I have a confusion there again. OK, so uh, the proper way would be so you have seen probably the SVMs lecture. So generally, if you have 
the equation the for example this is the like decision surface which is basically written as wx transpose b is equals to 0 so on the one half you are having let's say class omega 1 and on the other half you are having class omega 2 so from both the classes you got one one support vector at least two support vector will be there for two class classification as what we have seen in the last class also now the sbm if you think it in terms of a practical problem the sbm actually tries to maximize the margin and margin in case of uh, the theoretical formulation it is 2 by mod w which is basically the w or the weight of this particular uh, decision surface so margin should be maximum with the constraint that yi multiplied with w transpose xi plus h uh, is greater equal to 1 so for that uh, you have seen we construct a lagrangian then we solve the lagrangian and maximize the lagrangian to get the proper value of w so in this stochastic process this w will be tuned in such a way that you are getting you will get a uh, maximum margin uh, providing decision surface so as far as the practical problems or these kind of short numerical problems have been con uh, are uh, concerned so for that you have to make some uh, what you call um, some intelligent guesses for example in this particular equation so you have the distribution like this you have three classes on this particular area or three points in this particular area so over here what is the highest range of the point so that is 1 comma 0 and in the other class class 1 also the highest range of the value is 1 only so you can extend it such a way for example that is why i have chosen 1.5 over here and again over here i have chosen 1.5 so it will uh, give me a substantial uh, distance from the support vector points so uh, by solving the problems you will see that uh, that uh, intelligent guess guess that i am talking about you will get a grasp on this so these are standard problems for example ideally uh, um, I will show one use case today only. So for example, using MNIST database, so over here you have two features only. So in case of MNIST database, the image size is 28 cross 28. And as you have seen, the pro uh, professor has also said that uh, how you can generate feature vector, you take one column, then take the second column. So like that, you place the last column, so from a 28 cross 28 uh, image, you will get 784 cross 1 data. Now instead of, let, let us think, instead of two such uh, feature vectors, now you are having 784 feature vectors. So for this, it is not really possible that you come up with a finite set of equations. So for these kind of problems, you need to go for the optimization techniques and that is what we do in case of machine learning and deep learning problems. For example, in SVM also you have seen we use the uh, gradient descent based methods. So gradient descent gives you the formulation, but for these sort of problems, you need to uh, uh, go for a uh, intelligent uh, guess. So by that, these are standard problems and uh, in the last in the lecture also professor has also shown that uh, what are the uh, guesses for these particular solutions so this is one such equation for example you can take another equation like this over here but this equation you can see that uh, this is more closer to these particular solutions these particular points however you can choose another equation like this so you can see that over here the margin from these particular points from, from the green points these are higher but the margin from this particular red point is it is lower so you need to come up with some intelligent guess which will actually give you the particular solution and for example the range is 0 to 1 so what will be the 
uh, mid value. So mid value is 0 0.5. So from these two points, you can understand that 0 0.5 is the middle point. So you have the points. This is class omega 1. This is class omega 2. So one point, if the middle point will be the uh, uh, possible point which will give you the margin, a higher margin. So margin from this one to this one. So total margin will be higher. Otherwise, let us consider you take a point over here. So now you can see that margin from this to this point to this is very less. However, margin from this point to this is very high. So this is not satisfying the condition of SPM. So you can choose the middle point. So likewise, I have chosen the middle point over here and in this particular case also middle point. So that is why the equation is X1 plus X2 is equals to 0.5 as because 0 and 1 is the classes, uh, the points, and this is the separating. This, this is the point which will give you the maximum uh, margin. OK, thank you, sir. So uh, with this particular solution, so let me. Uh, so what are the support vectors in this particular case? I remove this intermediate lines. So what are the support vectors? It is 0, 0 on the other side and 0, 1, 1, 0 on yeah. one side. Yes, so the total uh, margin value will be the orthogonal distance between this point to the, uh, the line and the orthogonal distance from either of these points to the line. So again, let me uh, write margin is equals to D1 plus D2. Let us consider this one is D1 and this one is D2. So margin will be D1 plus D2 and you can evaluate it from uh, the uh, line equation also. So the first point is 0, 0. So 0 into, into 1, then 0 into 1, and then what you have is 0. 0.5, and then you can write uh, 1 square plus 1 square. So this 1 square plus 1 square is coming from this particular uh, line equation. And D2 will be subsequently, uh, let us consider the point is 0, 1. So it will be 0 into 1, then 1 into 1, and then minus 0. 0.5. And we can take a mod. Mod is just to show that the distance is uh, positive, because negative distance means that you just going to the opposite side. So 1 square plus 1 square again. So it will be how much? Uh, it will be. For the first case, it will be 1 by 2 root 2. And in the second case also, it will be 1 by 2 root 2. So the total this, uh, so the total margin will be again 1 upon 2 root 2. So in case of, let us consider this is margin for odd, and this is margin for and. So what we can see is that margin and is equals to margin odd. So this is the first point that this is the first observation. Second observation would be, so this is the weight matrix for this or. So weight matrix for or is 1, comma, 1, comma, minus 0.5 over here. And in case of the uh, and gate, the weight matrix is so the equation is 1, 1 and minus 1.5. So 1, <coughs> comma 1, comma minus 1.5. So now we can see that W or is not equals to W and. So these are the observations. So let us now match it with the options. So the weight vector of AND gate and OR gate will be same. No, because they are not. Second one is margin for AND and OR gate will be same. Uh, both margin and weight vector will be same. Again, wrong. None of the weight vector and margin will be same. Again, it is wrong. So option B is the correct option. So uh, uh, have any one of you actually checked the solution of NPTEL uh, website itself? They have also provided the solution. Have anyone checked that particular solution?
Yes, I have checked, sir, but uh, I didn't get the explanation clear. So. Yeah, yeah, because they have they just have given the images itself. So this yes. is the explanation. So okay. you uh, the truth table was not given, so I didn't know from where it was taken. Okay, so this is this uh, actual uh, solution. So you from the truth table, you will get the class information. So you will have two classes, either class zero or class one. Then you can construct the decision boundary and then you start evaluating the margins. So eventually you end up on uh, margin of and is equals to margin of or and the weight values are different. So that is why option B is the correct option. So this is the explanation for this particular uh, question. Okay. Okay. So the next question is: You've been given a similar type of representation. You have two features, x and y, and this is the class level. So uh, you need to find what is the uh, SBM decision boundary. So again, let us plot this uh, scenario. So for all these kind of problems, uh, uh, I would recommend you to go for the visual representation that will help you understanding the problem. So over here you have one comma one. So one one. So this is class plus one. And then you have minus one minus one. So it is from minus one minus one. OK, then you have uh, two comma two. So it will be over here. Two comma two. So all three points will be collinear. One one minus one one and uh, two comma two and two comma two is from class plus one. So it will be of red color. Then you have minus one plus two and which is also uh, uh, from class omega class plus one. So it will be some somewhere over here. Right, and then you have uh, one minus one. So this is one and this is minus one. So it is somewhere over here. So now uh, the question is, uh, what can be the possible decision boundary? And they have given some equations. So from the diagram itself, let me just uh, write down the points also. It will help in understanding. OK. So this is 1 comma 1. This is 2 comma 2. This is minus 1 comma 2. And the these points are minus 1 comma minus 1 and 1 comma minus 1. OK, so if I uh, illustrate all these equations, so let us first consider y is equals to 0. So y is equals to zero is which one? Y is equals to zero is this particular. Let us not start with y equals to zero. Let us start with other options. So first solution, let us consider option B. Let us start from option B. So in option B, you have x is equals to zero. So x is equals to zero is this one. So if we uh, consider this y axis as the uh, uh, decision boundary, then you can see. Then you can see you are making huge amount of misclassification. You can see that uh, uh, this particular guy is misclassified. Similarly, uh, this particular guy is misclassified. So in case of SBM, you saw that there is a decision boundary which separates the uh, um, feature space into two half spaces. And on the one side of the half space, there will be class omega one. And in the other side of the half space, there will be class omega two. Now, by that same logic, you have divided the whole feature plane into two parts on from the middle part. So this is one half space. This is another half space. And now you can see that there is a misclassification over here and over here. So x equals to zero is subsequently rejected because it gives substantial amount of misclassification. So you can reject this particular solution. OK. OK. Then uh, what is the second option? Second option is X is equals to Y. So X is equals to Y means the 
this particular line line passing through that origin so this is x is equals to y so in case of x is equal to y you are uh, separating the half space into this this sort so this is one half space and this is another half space so now in these two half spaces you can see okay substantially you are classifying these samples correctly so let's say this is class omega 1 and this is class omega 2 so you can uh, you, you are classifying these two particular points now what about the other points at this location you can see so if i write the sbm equation uh, sbm theory again so this is your decision boundary w transpose x plus b is equals to zero and for omega one what you write w transpose x plus b should be greater than zero and for omega two w transpose b should be plus w transpose x W transpose x plus b is less than zero for class omega two. Now over here you can see most of the points are lying on the decision surface. So for these points, they are not lying either on the uh, omega one half space nor on the uh, omega two half space. So that means for these three points, the decision will be can't be decided whether they actually lie in class omega 1 or omega 2. That means out of five points, now you are only classifying these two points only. That means again, this is not the optimal solution and SVM tries, tries to find the optimal solution. So therefore, again, X plus Y is rejected like how we have rejected X equals to zero. Now this uh, third option, is x plus y is equals to one. Okay, so let me uh, plot x plus y is equals to one. So let me take another page. And copy this particular diagram. So now your equation is x plus y equals to one. So this is uh, one comma zero, and this is your zero comma one. Okay. Now let me uh, So, so can anyone tell me that uh, uh, whether this point will lie on this equation or not x plus y equals to 1. So you have another point minus 1 comma 2 whether it will lie it on x plus y equals to 1. So this is the equation x plus y is equals to 1. <coughs> yes, anyone? It will be misclassified because it may come under uh, the green classification. Uh, so no, my question is whether this point uh, will lie on this particular line or not. Yes, it will lie. Yeah, it will lie as because you can verify it from this uh, equation as well. So x, the value of x is minus one, value of y is two. So minus one plus two is equals to one. So that means this is uh, uh, satisfying this equation of this line. So let me just uh, place it over here because the image is not that accurate. So it will be minus one comma two and it will pass through through this particular line. So this is the equation of 
uh, this particular line x plus y equals to one. So now again, you can see that this is the support vector, and the second support vector is this one. Right? Any confusion? So this is one support vector, and this is another support vector. Now you can see that even though you are actually uh, uh, getting some uh, classic uh, substantial amount of classification accuracy, but for this particular point, uh, you are not able to decide because that is lying on the decision surface itself. So whatever point lies on the decision surface for that particular point, you will not be able to classify it because that is on 50 50% 50% 50 probability. So 50% probability will be for uh, omega 2 for, and 50% probability for omega 1. So you cannot decide actually for that particular scenario. And again, if I just uh, uh, for the sake of completeness, again, if I just calculate the uh, margin from this point to this line, so it would be how much? So 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 and then minus 1, then root over 1 square plus 1 square. and over here, it will be 1 minus 1 minus 1, and it would be 1 square plus 1 square. And now you can take mod also. So it will be 1 upon root 2. And over here also, it will be 1 upon root 2. So it will be 2 by root 2. That means root 2. So root 2 is 1.414. So this is the value of margin. So we are now left with the last option. Y is equals to zero. So let me take another page and. This. So now you have this last solution y is equals to zero. So that means. Uh, sorry, so this particular line, so this is equals to y is equals to zero line. So now you can see that you are getting full 100% classification over here. So there is no misclassification. And if I just try to locate the uh, support vector, so uh, can any one of you actually assist me? What are the support vectors over here? One one. One one. One minus one. One minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Yes. So these three are the support vectors. Now, what is the margin? So margin is very easy over here. So the orthogonal distance from this point to this point is one. And again, orthogonal distance from this point to this point is one. So margin is equals to 1 plus 1 is equals to 2. So you can see that over here with even though you are getting substantial classification accuracy in case of x plus y equals to 1, still your margin is margin value is 1.414. However, in this particular scenario, if you choose your decision boundary to be y equals to 0, your margin value is 2, which is maximum for all these four places for four cases. So that is why a will be your final decision boundary using SPM. Otherwise, just by looking into the picture itself, you can uh, do the uh, you, you can make a guess. So that is what I'm saying that when you'll be practicing several problems, you will get to know just by looking at the picture itself. So what could be the solution? So this is one such case. So y is equals to zero is the uh, uh, final answer for this particular question. Now the second question says. So let me copy it because it's a continuation of the. Excuse me, sir. I have yes. a doubt. Yes. The previous question. Uh, so this one. So here, yes. Yes. Sir, uh, here the axis is uh, means horizontal, which one we are taking two axis X and Y. So whichever we have taken as horizontal, that is Y axis. Uh, so uh, X is this axis. This is X, X and this y. is X axis 
and this is y axis and the equation of this line. So this let me draw it with some another color. So let me. Where is the pen? So this line. This line, the equation of this line is y equals to zero. And the equation of this particular line is x equals to zero. So the axis are x axis is in, in the horizontal axis. This is x axis and this is y axis. But the line corresponding to x axis and y axis is the just the opposite one because in x axis all y values are zero and in y axis all x values are zero. So that is the thing. OK, sir, thank you. OK, so subsequent to the previous question, so we have. The concurrent one, so this question says now you have got the decision boundary, so this is your decision boundary y is equals to zero. Now let us put uh, uh, imagine uh, let us put some unknown points. So this unknown point is let's say minus one comma minus two. So that is minus one comma minus two minus one comma minus two. So uh, minus one comma minus two will be classified as what class? Anyone? So this is omega two. This is omega one. Omega one means plus one class. And omega two means minus one class. Omega two. Omega two. Yeah, so it will be classified as omega two. That means minus one. Right now. Second option is minus one minus two will be classified as plus one wrong. Second third point is one comma minus two. So you have one comma minus two. So again it will be classified as uh, in which particular class? Anyone? Omega two. Omega two. So that means minus one. So option one and option three are correct so far. The point one comma minus two is classified as plus one. So this is wrong. So option uh, uh, statement one and three. So statement one and three are true. So option B is the correct answer. OK. So this particular uh, question, so how many of you got uh, um, Full marks for this particular question. You can raise your hands. So this is the question. OK, great. So the question says uh, you have one feature X which is of dimension. So. X. R means X is a real value with a dimension one. And a binary class Y binary class could be. Uh, either. Minus one comma one. Or you can write it as zero comma one. So in this particular case they have written minus one comma one. So. Let me follow that particular uh, notation. So you have. The representations such as point P1. So this is point P1. So if I just tabulate the information, so point P1, point P2, and point P3. So for this, <coughs> it is minus one, minus one. Then you have one, one, and you have three, one. Okay. So this Y is your class and X is your feature. OK, now if I draw the uh, information that is given, so your feature is a univariate feature. That is why you have the dimension one. So uh, you just need to plot the feature in the horizontal direction. So let us consider this is point zero. This is the origin, let's say. And. 
let me start drawing the classes. So minus one belongs to uh, class minus one. One belongs to class one and three. So over here, let's say it is three. Three also belongs to class one. So class one are blue and minus one is red. So this is X is equals to minus one, X is equals to one, X is equals to three. So can anyone uh, guess about like what will be the optimal decision boundary? Which will be the optimal decision boundary? X equal to zero. X equal to zero. So over here, let me change the color. So X equal to zero could be the uh, decision boundary. So over here, what is the margin? Mar what are the support vectors? First of all, X equal to minus one, X equal to one. Okay, yes. So what is the total value of margin? Margin is D1 plus D2. So the value of distances are one comma or one and one. So it will be margin is equals to two. Two. Yes. And uh, so this is the uh, situation for this particular given tabulated form. Now let us start evaluating the options. Okay. So let us start with option A. In case of option A, uh, it is written that maximum margin will increase if we remove the point P2 from the training set. Okay, so he is asking that this is point P1, this is point P2, and this is point P3. So remove P2. Okay, so let us uh, do the same. So this is. Uh, This is minus one. This is minus one. And uh, P2 is removed. And this is X is equals to three. So now uh, what could be the uh, possible decision boundary in this case? Anyone? X equal to one. Yeah, X equal to one. So if X equal to one is the decision boundary, so what is the margin? Margin means distance from this point to this point is two. And again, distance from this point to this point is two unit only. So margin value is four. Sir, how we have decided margin is, uh, sorry, X is equal to one here. Okay, so if I just draw the grid points, Uh, this is let's say zero and this is one and this is two. So you can uh, draw n number of decision points, decision boundaries. So let us consider, let me draw three decision boundaries. One, two and this x equal to two. So that means x equal to one, x equal to two and x equal to zero. Now you can see that if I choose the decision boundary to be X equal to zero, then margin from this red point will be very less. However, margin from this point will be very high. So that means uh, it is not able to provide enough margin to a particular class. So for that X equal to zero can be nullified. Okay. Now again, let me choose X equal to two be the decision boundary. Then you can see the blue point from this particular line is very close. However, this red point is far away from this decision boundary. So that means for red point, it is giving enough margin, but for blue point, it is not able to provide good margin. But that is what we do not expect from our SPM because SBM tries to provide the optimal solution by providing enough margin for both the classes, for both the support vectors. So by that logic, X2 will also be nullified. 
Now we are left with the final option that is x is equals to 1. Now if you check the distance from uh, the decision boundary to the point is how much? 2 unit. So if I just write it like this 1, 2, 3, 0 and minus 1 and red point is sitting over here and the green point is sitting over here and we are choosing the decision boundary to be x equal to 1. So what is the decision? What is the distance from uh, this decision boundary to this particular point? 2, right? And again over here, the distance between minus uh, the red point to this particular line is also 2 unit. That means only x equal to 1 gives you enough uh, uh, separation from this particular decision boundary. Only x equal to 1 gives enough distance to the uh, support vectors. And that is what is the aim of the SVM. SVM tries to give you the optimal decision boundary such that for both the classes, the margin could be maximized. So over here, we can see that for both the classes, the separation is maximum which was not there unlike this for example if you choose this to be the optimal solution then this is very near however this is far away so this is the discrepancy so have you got the point or got it well? sir. thank you okay so in this particular uh, case if x1 is equals to x equal to 1 is the uh, decision boundary then your margin is 4. And in the previously, with the case that is given with all these tabulated condition, margin is equals to 2. That means margin can be maximized if we remove P2. So this is true that we have seen because margin has now become 4. So next question is, uh, next uh, thing is margin will increase if we remove P3. So now let's say if I remove P3, let's say if I, I have removed P3. So will that affect in the uh, choice of the decision boundary? If I remove P, so will that affect in uh, choosing the decision boundary? Yes. No, that means the decision boundary is still the same, is still the same. So that is X is equals to zero. So still, if I choose uh, P3 to be removed, then my margin is still 2. And if I remove P2, margin is 4. So that means option A is the correct option. So option B is wrong. Option C is mar maximum margin will remain same if we remove P2. So this is also wrong because if I remove P2, margin will increase. And none of the above, so this is also wrong. So Option A is the correct option for this particular question. OK. So I think this is the last question for uh, week three. So they are asking uh, while designing SPM in the training. There could be one uh, rule and after you design the SBM model, that means after all the gradient descent optimization and all, after that you got the decision boundary. So there will be a testing rule. So that testing rule, so let us start with the training rule. So the training rule is yi a transpose xi plus b should be greater than 1. So for example, if you have two classes over here and if let's say these are the support vectors for both the classes then you can just multiply yi and the decision surface and as because uh, yi is either 1 and minus 1 and a transpose x plus b should be greater than 0 or 
in the case of training it will be greater than 1 for belonging to omega 1 and it transposed x plus b less than 1 for omega 2. Now if you just see if you multiply y i for omega 1 case for omega 1 the value of y i is how much plus 1. So that means it is still b greater than 1. However, in this particular case you can see let's say a transpose x plus b is equals to minus 2 for omega 2 class. But you can see for omega 2 the y i value is minus 1. So you multiply this minus 2 with minus 1. So you will get 2 that means it is plus 1. So y i a transpose x i plus b should be greater than equal to 1 for both the cases in training phase. So it is there in the lecture itself. So I think probably uh, first lecture of SVM. And upon doing all the optimization to get the optimal value of this weight A and the optimal value of bias, you, you, you have got the decision surface. Now your testing criteria would be A transpose X plus B should be greater than zero if it belongs to omega one and just the opposite a transpose x plus b is less than zero for omega 2. So let us start scanning the solutions. So statement 4 says while designing SBM for two class the equation uh, should be used for training the vectors and uh, during inference. Inference means testing. <coughs> there are two phases training and testing and testing is also sometime it is called as inference. So inference means testing. So during inference an object uh, xj will follow this particular uh, uh, representation to belong to class omega 1. So so far 3 and 4 it is OK. During inference object. So this is not OK because uh, if you know what is yj then what is the meaning of testing an unknown data? So this is cannot this cannot be possible. And uh, while training it should be greater than one because there, there should be a normalizing factor. So option three and four. So the, the, this is pretty straightforward from the lecture itself. So option D is the final correct option. OK. So with this we have solved the week three part. So let us move to. Week four. Question. Oh sorry, so there are some couple of questions are left. So uh, in case of SBM optimization, so SBM optimization, the structure is parabola. Basically this structure is parabola. But if you if you choose, for example, uh, in most of the cases we are considering our feature vector to be two dimensional x1 and x2. So if your feature vector is two dimensional. Then your weight vector will also be two dimensional. Like x1 plus x2 is equals to 1.5. So x w is 1 1 and bias is 1.5. Right. However. Uh, and as and in this particular solution uh, in this particular case the uh, optimization equation was margin is equals to 2 by norm w and uh, the constraint was constraint was yi a transpose xi so sorry it would be w so W transpose xi plus b should be greater than or equal to 1. Now, as because this is a constraint optimization, you have seen that you need to form a Lagrangian. So, this Lagrangian actually comes with a Lagrangian factor alpha, and then uh, you saw that uh, you can write del L by del B del L by sorry del L by del W and then you saw the final Lagrangian 
is actually in the order of alpha square. So Lagrangian is a function of alpha. So you saw that the terms are alpha square, uh, something like that. So you had double summation and then alpha i into alpha j. So alpha i into alpha j, you can subsequently write it as alpha square. So that means your equation is something like y equals to x square. If I say, I'm just simplifying the equations. So it is in the sort of y equals to x square. So y equal to x square is what? It is a equation of parabola. Now you can see that uh, uh, the equation or the uh, uh, inference that we are drawing for a two dimensional case. Now your feature vectors for a practical machine learning deep learning problem is not a two dimensional feature vector. You have, let's say, in case of MNIST data set, you will be having 784 dimensions. So that means uh, instead of getting a Cartesian uh, two dimensional plane, you will be having 784 dimensional plane. So on that 784 dimensional plane, this parabola will be termed as parabola. So that is why the uh, loss curve is called paraboloid. In two dimensional case, it will be parabola. In n dimensional case, it will be paraboloid. Okay. So, uh, likewise, let me start. Uh, let us consider that we have already got to know that the loss surface is parabola for two dimensional case in case of SPM. So, this is a parabola and in this particular parabola the you have one global minima global minima so you can see that the uh, optimization maximization so how many local minima can be encountered so in the case of this particular parabola global minima is equal to local minima as because there is only single one minima is there. So you can for one particular uh, for if two dimensional case, if the curve is having single local minima. So in case of. N dimensional problem, the problem will look like this. So it will be something like a U shaped. You can think it as. A bowl. And all the bowls are having these parabolas. Right. So this is the final point that you want to achieve. So this is the only minima that is having. So your answer could be only one single minima. So for these kind of problems, first you generalize the problem in two dimension and then from two dimension you can infer to the higher dimension problem. So over here you can see that only one local minima is there. So you can actually replicate that problem to the uh, higher dimensional case. Just you can think it as a bowl. So in the bowl you can uh, consider a convex bowl is there. So in this particular convex bowl, you can think that this is the final minima that uh, it contains. So over here you are having the similar representation. You are having one single minima over there. OK. OK, so with this we have covered uh, week three quiz. Now let us start uh, with week four uh, practice problems. So in week four, uh, can, can anyone actually summarize in week four what we have learned? It was basically on optimization. And uh, we had a uh, batch, uh, stochastic and gradient descent batch, dis all those were discussed. And we started the neural networks as well. So yes, neural network, yes, yes. neural yes. network was started. And also the nonlinear activation functions are also uh, I think that is also covered, like delu function, sigmoid function, uh, tan h function, like that. 
so uh, some of the nonlinear activations uh, followed by the optimization uh, the variant of optimization and neural networks so these were actually the uh, problem uh, these are actually the topics that is being covered in week 4 so uh, uh, if you follow the neural network first lecture of the neural network professor shows that and gate and or gate so and uh, in this particular session also we have seen that where it is yes so and gate in case of and gate so you can see that the problem is linearly separable so you have the data points like this in case of and gate the data points are like this and in case of or gate the data points looks like this 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 and this so uh, to classify these two classes over here so uh, let me just draw a boundary about these classes so over here this is the boundary and in this particular case, this is the boundary of this particular class and this is the boundary of this particular class. So um, just by uh, drawing a line itself. So just by drawing a line itself, you can uh, classify these two problems, right? Is it not? However, in case of XOR, so in case of XOR, is the problem linearly separable or non-linear is non-linearly separable? Yes, anyone? Non-linearly separable. Linear. Non yeah, non-linearly separable. And and uh, why it is non-linearly separable? So because a single boundary cannot share the given. Yeah, yeah. So if I start showing the uh, decision points, so zero 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 one one zero one one. And the corresponding classes, I can write it as uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. So let us start plotting them. So 0, 0 is class 0, 1, 1 is class 0. And what you have is uh, 0, 1 is class 1, and 1, 1 is class 1. So now you can see, unlike the previous cases, over here, just by putting a single straight line, you are not able to what sort of straight line, uh, whatever sort of straight line you draw, you cannot classify these problems. So you need to draw something non nonlinear boundary to classify uh, these uh, two classes because they are not linearly separable. So you can draw either two different lines, but that is not possible because you need to have one single function to classify this particular uh, classification problem. So therefore, instead of drawing a line operation, you now need to go for nonlinear decision boundary. So that is why XOR cannot uh, XOR cannot be uh, um, classified using a single layer perceptron. So for the linear linearly separable case, linearly separable case, you can employ single neuron. But now in case of XOR, you can see that the uh, decision boundary is nonlinear. So nonlinear problem needs more than one neuron. So that is why XOR cannot be solved using 
a single layer perceptron and it is there in the lecture itself so you can uh, the elaborate discussion is also there that how you can uh, classify this particular sort of xor gate and for that uh, if you see the lecture you need three set of operations so what are these what are the operations anyone what are the three cascaded operations that you need to uh, uh, employ for this xor classification Yes, anyone? And R NAND. So and or R NAND. NAND. So by this you can see that uh, uh, to classify a X or gate problem, you need to have three set of operations or three set of neurons to basically classify the X or problem. Unlike in case of AND or OR gate, you just need a single neuron. So in probably in uh, neural network lecture one and neural network lecture two, you will get this particular solution in an elaborate fashion. Okay. Moving to the next question. Uh, so the question states that for a function f, f theta one and theta naught. So if theta naught and theta one are initialized at a local minimum. So the first observation is theta one and theta two initialized at local minimum. Then what would be the values of theta zero and theta one after a single iteration using gradient descent? Okay, fine. Uh, so what is the uh, equation of a uh, what do you call the gradient descent formula in terms of theta if anyone knows so what is the equation for a gradient descent should dl by dl theta the gradient uh, so gradient descent I'm talking about gradient descent. So we have learned the gradient descent optimization in SBM lecture. So what is the equation for the weight updation in case of gradient descent? So let me write. So it is theta a plus one is theta a minus eta. Eta is basically the learning rate learning rate multiplied with the gradient so del f by del theta because the function over here given is f so i have written del f by del theta now uh, we need to evaluate for theta 1 and theta 2 so these equations will be typecasted in the form of theta 1 and theta 2 so this equation will be theta 1 of k plus 1 is equals to theta k minus eta into del f by del theta 1. Now what they have said, let us consider for theta 1, the value is initialized at local minimum. So let's say I have given a curve like this and this is a local minimum. So at minima, what is the value of derivative? If a function has a minima at certain point, zero. so what is the value? Yeah, so gradient value is zero at that particular point. So, so let us consider this f of theta one and theta two looks like this, and we have been initialized theta one at this particular location. So del f by del theta one at this particular location will be how much zero the gradient will vanish at the uh, local minima uh, at the minima so this value is zero that means theta one k plus one is equals to theta one k that means the values are same similarly if i just uh, reproduce the same thing theta 
जीरो ऑफ के प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू थीटा जीरो के माइनस ईटा इन टू डेल एफ बाई डेल थीटा नॉट अगेन थीटा नॉट इज इनिशियलाइज एट लोकल मिनिमा सो अगेन एट लोकल मिनिमा द डेरिवेटिव विल बी जीरो सो दैट मीन्स थीटा जीरो के प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू थीटा के दैट मीन्स द वैल्यू विल बी सेम आफ्टर वन इंटरेशन सो वट हियर थीटा जीरो एंड थीटा वन विल रिमेन सेम Yes, any uh, uh, issue with this particular question? Okay, it seems that there is no issue, so I can proceed with the next question. Okay, so the next question says. you have a cost function j j theta which is uh, equated as 0.25 theta square so 0.25 theta square that means it's a equation of parabola okay as shown in the graph below refer to this graph and choose the correct option stated uh, over here so you have these two statements the magnitude of weight update at the green point at the green point is higher than magnitude of weight update at yellow point okay so for any weight update equation in this particular course we will be following the gradient descent rule right so the again let me write the gradient descent rule then so in terms of theta again so theta a plus 1 is equals to theta k minus eta into del l over here we have j so let me write in terms of del j del j theta divided by del theta right now let us consider from point p1 it has reached point p2 because in any optimization so this is a convex optimization because the surface is convex so convex means you can think again you can think of a bowl so uh, the bowl is of convex shape and this is the minima and you are trying to this is the minima and you are trying to reach the minima using this gradient descent rule so the gradient descent rule initially your theta was at this particular point then your gradient descent rule has got it down over here and then again then in the next iteration your gradient has got to this particular point yellow point and at yellow point you reach the uh, uh, global minima so that means you can stop your optimization problem over here that means you you have got uh, at this particular point you will get good accuracy as because the solution is optimum over there now uh, let us consider uh, we are at point 2 or the green point so green point means previously we were at point 1 at the red point so from the red point the let us consider the del j theta by d theta is uh, 0.25 into 2 theta and it will be how much it will be 0.5 theta so del j Theta, d theta. So the weight update at green point. So that means weight update will be dependent on del j d th del theta, and del j del theta is directly proportional to theta. So that means if theta is more, then the weight update is more. If theta is less, then weight weight update is less. So let us consider the first op op option. the magnitude of weight update at green point is higher at green point the magnitude of weight update is higher higher uh, than the magnitude of yellow point so as because we can see this is the direction of theta theta over here is higher than this one over here what is the value of theta theta is 0 and over here theta is some finite value so let's say uh, 0 1 2 3 over here the theta value is 3 so as because del j del theta is proportional to theta that means at point 2 the 
um, weight update will be higher. So weight update is proportional to theta. So at point two, at point two is greater than theta point three or green. So that means weight update subsequently the weight update at point two will be uh, so over here it is. I can still write it like this. So theta point one greater than theta point two greater than theta point two point three. So weight. Update. At point one will be greater than point two greater than point three. So this is the inference. Now let's just check the statement. The magnitude of weight update at green point is higher than magnitude of weight update at yellow point. So that is true because at two the weight update is greater than weight three. So this is correct as because del j is proportional to theta. The magnitude of weight update at green point is higher than magnitude of weight update at red point. So red point is point one, but we can see that one is greater than two. That means this option is incorrect. So only option one is correct option for this particular case because weight update the, the key rule is weight update is uh, proportional to theta for this particular problem. So that is why uh, weight update at point one is greater than weight update in point two greater than point three. Okay. So uh, next question is choose the correct option uh, gradient of Continuous and differentiable function is so. It is asking that you have a continuous function. And. Uh, let us consider this is L of theta. So del L theta by del theta. Uh, it is zero at minimum. Obviously at minima. At minima, the gradient will be equal to zero. So option one is correct. Is non-zero at actually at minima and maxima both. So at is non-zero gradient is non-zero at maximum. So this is incorrect. Then uh, the gradient is zero at saddle point. So what is the saddle point? Anyone? Sir, what is maximum occur on the same point? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so one uh, example could be. So let us consider you have a function like this. Uh, someone's mic is on. OK, so you, you have two functions over here. Uh, so let's say this is a function X1 and this function X2. Uh, let's say with respect to theta. So your X axis is theta. Now you can see. Uh, it reaches a minima. Over here, right? So this is a minima point. This is a minima point. But if you think uh, if you see this particular uh, curve, then it is it is starting from zero and it is going down. So that means this was the maxima. Now if I just join these two equations, these two uh, curves together, now you can see that if you see the curve direction from this point to this point, it is a minima. However, from this point to this point, or let's say from this point to this point, it is a maximum point, and from this direction to this direction, this is a minima point. So at x equals to zero, you can see at both at, at one direction you see minima. And from another direction you see a maxima. So these points where minima and maxima 
at both the direction you can see simultaneously so these points are treated as saddle points so these are also called uh, a sort of stationary points so maxima minima saddle points all these points are called stationary points so at stationary point also uh, at any stationary point the gradient will vanish and over here also the same thing will happen that means it will got a, a, a zero at the saddle point as well and magnitude decreases as you get closer to the minima and it is obvious that for example over here the gradient was more over here the gradient is still less over here the gradient is less at this particular location the gradient is zero because it reaches minima so subsequently you reach to minima that means your magnitude will decrease the gradient's magnitude will start decreasing so option one three and four so option b is correct one option one three four these are the correct option so at saddle point you can see both minima and maxima from both the directions so therefore uh, obviously you will get a uh, you will receive a stationary point at the saddle point and uh, any stationary point will have gradient equal to zero okay now the next question is you have a, a vector 3 1 2 let's say this is v and you need to calculate the softmax activation output. So what is the formula of softmax activation output? Let's say output is equals to O. So what is the formula of softmax activation? Anyone? E raised to E raised to max by divided by E raised to V i divided by e raised to v i for all i that means let's say if you are calculating for so o i output for ith element so let's say you are calculating for the first uh, uh, element so output at first element will be e of v1 divided by i equals to 1 to 3 e of v i so that means e to the power v1 e to the power v1 e to the power v2 plus e to the power v3 so what is the value of v1 that is 3 so e to the power 3 and in the denominator it will be e to the power 2 e to the power 1 so what is the value anyone Yes, please calculate the value. Yes, you can use calculator for that. Okay, so let me calculate e square plus e to the power three. So this is zero point six six five. So zero point six seven. So over here you can see that option D is matching. So you don't have to go for the rest uh, rest of the uh, calculation. So option d is the correct option but you can uh, always check for the other options uh, other uh, calculations as well so you can calculate uh, output 2 and output 3 likewise using the same formula so this is the formula so you can calculate it by your own okay sir can you so, repeat the problem once again uh -huh. so the question is you have a vector which has 3, 1, 2, these are the values of the vector. And you need to find softmax of V, right? So to, what is the formula for softmax? Softmax formula is, so 
if you have v let's say three one two you are just applying an activation so the output will also be of same dimension three cross one because you are just employing some mathematical formula on each of these points and the uh, and let us consider the, uh, i am abbreviating at it as o that means output so the formula for softmax is this one so let's say this is O1, this is O2, and this is O3. So in case of O1, the formula will be how the formula is e raised to the power V1 divided by summation of all the exponent forms of this vector. So e raised to the power V1 divided by e raised to the power V1 plus e raised to the power V2 plus e raised to the power V3. So you just plug in the value. So V1 is how much? 3 v2 is 1 and v3 is 2. So that is why I have written it like this and you can solve. So they have just asked how to find the softmax output for a given vector. Okay, sir. thank you. Okay. So uh, what is the difference between stochastic gradient descent and uh, full batch gradient descent? In full batch, we will be updating the weights only once after completing one set. We will not yes. be frequently updating. Yes. And in case of stochastic one? For Sorry. every training sample, we will be updating the weights. Yes. So in case of stochastic gradient, SG, uh, you will be uh, updating for each sample. In case of full batch gradient descent, you'll be updating for the whole data set or full batch. In case of mini batch gradient descent, you will choose a subset of the full batch, let's say, you, you are considering batch size equals to 32. So you'll be using 32 such examples. You will pass it through the neural network and then uh, you will uh, calculate the loss and then update. So that means for mini batch, you will take weight update. Mini batch weight update. So let us see, scan the solutions. So in stochastic gradient descent, small batch of sample is selected randomly uh, in stochastic gradient descent, small batch of sample. So initially itself, it is wrong. In case of stochastic gradient descent, there is no concept of small batch, so out. In case of uh, stochastic gradient descent, whole data. So again, this is wrong. In stochastic gradient considers only one sample for updates and has noisy updates. So option C is correct one. Let's see the fourth option, stochastic gradient is a non-iterative process. So again, this is wrong. It is an iterative process. So every iteration you do wait update. So option C is the correct one. OK, so let's start with this uh, particular uh, question. So you have a, a cost function or an objective function. So this is J two theta square minus two theta plus two. And you have a learning rate of 0 0.01, right? Uh, so at T plus one at iteration. Iteration. So what will be the gradient descent formula for uh, at T plus T plus one at iteration? anyone so what is the gradient descent for theta t plus one so theta t plus j theta t no theta t, t minus minus delta j theta by d theta del j theta by d theta and you have to multiply the learning rate alpha into del j by del theta. For example, 
I think I have written over here as well. So theta k plus one is equals to theta k minus learning rate into the gradient. So that is what we have written over here. Theta t plus one is equals to theta t minus the learning rate multiplied with the gradient. So just plug the values. So theta t minus 0 0.01. So del j del theta is how much? Del j del theta. It is 4 theta minus 2. So you can write 2 into 2 theta minus 1. So just plug this value over here. So 2 into 2 theta minus 1 over here. So theta t minus 0 0.02 2 theta minus 1. So theta t plus 1. So which which is the correct option? Yes, so option D is the correct one. Theta T plus 1 equals to theta T minus 0 0.02 to theta minus 1. So any confusion in this particular question? OK, so I hope there is no confusion so I can proceed. So uh, in this particular question, you, you've been stated that what are the steps of gradient descent algorithm? So you have been given five steps and you need to arrange these steps. So can you, can any one of you actually uh, give me the proper steps that what should be applied first and what not? Uh, initialize random weight and bias. Yes, initialize random weight and bias. Uh, pass an input through the network and get values from output layer. Yeah, so let me write in terms of, of, a, of a model. So let's say you have a, D, a deep neural network, DNN. So you have weights and biases. So first you need to initialize them. Initialize them. So the screen is visible, right? Uh, yes. I don't know what happened. So uh, let me uh, continue. So uh, uh, we need to initialize the uh, weights and biases. Then let's say you have an input image. You need to pass this input image through this particular deep neural network. So second is this is first. Second is pass input and get output. So you have got an output. OK, so this is three. Then uh, uh, yes, you need to calculate the error. So let's say you have 30 such images. So you will be passing all 30 images. Let's say you are doing mini batch gradient uh, descent operation. So let's say you have 32 batch size. So you will be passing all 32 images through this particular deep neural network. You will get 32 outputs. Then you need to calculate the loss. Loss value. Calculate. Then then what you have to do? Go to each neurons which contributes to the error. Yeah, so uh, after calculating the loss value, you, first you need to do is you need to calculate the gradient. Then you have to pursue the uh, gradient descent rule and which will subsequently update the yes. weights of the neuron. Weights of the uh, uh, weights of the neuron that basically uh, give, give some contribution in the error. And uh, what the gradient descent will try to do, it will try to reduce the loss by using a convex optimization. Yes. OK, so that is what option five is uh, saying. So you need to reduce the error. 
and after reducing uh, after doing all this gradient descent all all then you need to reiterate to find the best weights of the neural network that means for example uh, at this particular position you apply a gradient descent uh, let's say this is your global minima so at this particular instant you apply a gradient descent you reach to this position but it is not the uh, optimal solution as because it is far away from this local min uh, from the minima so again you need to reiterate the gradient descent you, you you have reached this point again reiterate and you reach the final minima so at this point you need to stop so this process is called reiterate over the loss curve or the loss surface actually to uh, get uh, the best result. So that is what it is written in option two. So this is the final answer. So four, three, one, five, two. Four, three, uh, one, five, two. So with this, uh, we have covered the uh, uh, week four sample questions. So I think this will help you in solving the uh, actual quiz that is there in the course website and probably the due date is uh, by the next week. So make sure you submit it within the due date. Otherwise, you will uh, your marks will not be uh, otherwise you'll uh, not be allowed to submit your uh, with solution itself, so you, you, you will not get marks for that. So. I hope uh, so if you have any questions, you can ask me. For the quiz that we have solved. Till now. OK, so it seems that there is no further question. So actually I had a meeting. I have a meeting from 8 PM. So I thought of doing this uh, coding session, but uh, we can take up this coding session in the next class as well. So in the next class, so. If I do the whole coding session itself, uh, if I just not solve the quiz solution, so will it be OK with you or should I solve the quiz questions only? OK, sir. So sorry, then the quiz and the Python session would be helpful. Both. The yeah, yeah. For example, right now uh, I have a meeting, so therefore I think I would not be able to uh, give much time. So I I'm planning to end the session by now, but in the next class, what I'm planning is that uh, I will either solve the quiz or uh, do the Python coding session. So will it be fine with you? Sir, please solve the quiz. OK, solve the quiz, right? OK. Yes, sir. Sir, coding, can you upload? Yeah, coding I can upload upload. So uh, from uh, you have got the GitHub link right in the course website. Uh, the GitHub link is also provided. Yes, so let sir. Me, yeah, so I will upload the codes over there so you can just click on the run collab button so it will head you to the collab and then you can run it at your machine also. OK. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, so I hope sir. no further query is there. So I can. Sir. Yes, yes. Sir, it's possible to print the coding also, sir, next week. Okay, if time permits, then I uh, I will definitely do that coding session as well. Because okay, uh, if I just give you the code, I don't think so. It will be very much helpful. If I don't do the illustration, so I think it will be not that helpful. So if time permits, I will do both the coding session as well as the quiz solution as well. OK, sir, sir next week. Yeah, yeah. Sir, my question is, uh, is this timing Friday 6 to 8? Is this fixed 
or yeah, you want to move this to saturday or sunday no 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 actually uh, this timing is fixed okay sir because lot of us i don't know how many of us are really working professionals it's very yeah i think i think many of you are working professionals because in the course website that we are hand handling so it seems that many of the participants are working professionals and that is why they are not able to probably join but uh, anyway the videos will be uploaded in youtube so anyone can watch uh, at any time okay thank you sir yeah thank you Okay, so uh, let me just stop recording and sharing as well.